<laughs> all right, all of you freedom loving boys and girls, welcome to Mission Critical Podcast. This is episode 35. We are your hosts. We'll go around and you, if you haven't watched any of our podcasts and don't know who we are, well, then you're, you're, you're way behind the power curve. Hey, in tonight's episode, it's going to be a short episode. It's Thanksgiving week. Today is Wednesday, the 22nd. Tomorrow is Thursday, the 23rd, Thanksgiving. We've got our four horsemen of the apocalypse here. Insert your own sound of, you know, the, the beat of impending doom of horse. Uh, thank you. Who did that? Was that you, Redbeard? Yep. Nice. Very good. You're Very welcome. good. All right. So tonight's episode, though, it's going to be um, the, the main focus for tonight or the topic, if you will, is going to be, you know, for what or what are what are you giving thanks for this year? Right. So we're going to try to be a little positive and you can tell we're kind of laughing because I think one or two of us are unsure if there's anything positive. <laughs> to give thanks for this year, 2023, FJB, you know, let's go, Joey. Hey, did you guys know, just real quickly, he was the most popular uh, of all the presidents in the history of America. He received the most votes of any president in the history of America. Do you guys know that? I mean, are we talking legitimate votes or illegitimate votes? Because that's... Hey, just, that give thanks, just give thanks that you can count, Jeremy. Uh-huh. Well... <laughs> All right, so here we go. So that's going to be our, our topic. We're going to give, you know, what is it that we're giving thanks for? Um, having a little bit of fun here tonight. Uh, but we're going to start off kind of get into this new format where we start off with like, you know, the Mad Minute or Fast and Furious. You know, we're just going to, you know, give a quick little, hey, here's who we are. And then it's kind of like a, um, a current events, you know, and everybody gets to chime in with their own topic, you know, three to five minutes of what it is. So we're going to start off right there. And let's go straight down in Hollywood Squares to Paul whose lighting makes his beard look even more badass. Paul, kick us off. What is a current event that you've been following that either, you know, chaps your ass, gets your goat, or makes you, puts a smile on your face, sir? Yeah, so while, while I was wrapping up my work day today, which was going to be an early work day, um, there's other computer security issues going on, but we'll put that aside. Um, I'm listening to the news and, and so on, and, and it wasn't covered widely, but and, and you know, by the time anybody hears this, it'll probably be covered widely. But there was a, um, you know, a, basically a terrorist attack at our northern border uh, and between Niagara and Buffalo, where a car, basically, a car bomb drove into the booth, which is well protected, um, in case somebody crashes. They're not necessarily preparing for a bomb, but in this case, I do believe that the person in the booth is in the hospital and in stable condition. So that's good news. The two people in the car are dead. It blew up. Um, so, again, just like Google likes to say when they, uh, you know, you have a, a nice article or, you know, you're doing a search for something that, you know, is that they don't like. It doesn't go with their agenda. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that route here now because the story is developing. We don't know, but I do believe it looks like a terrorist attack. Um, and there are other incidents going on um, that we'll find out. You know, keep your eyes open and. You know, I hope everybody's okay, um, except those that are trying to do this to us. All right, trying to get a little faster here. My setup, so I can always have my finger on my, take my uh, microphone off mute. Anybody want to add to what Paul just said there? I've got something to add if no one else does. Yeah, if, if you want to go, Mark, go for it. Well, I just want to go into what we were all talking about. You know, we all kind of did our pregame here. Everybody's just having fun. You know, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow, but... To Paul's note, I mean, so that I, I'm kind of hobbling around a little bit better today, but I saw that um, breaking news a little while ago. But concurrently, there were 20 from a different port of entry, a POE um, in the Northeast. I can't remember. You know, so don't quote me on this, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, somewhere up in the Northeast. There's another POE and 20 people tried to bum rush across the border. And so from, you know, to what Paul's point is, and I'm not saying these two events are connected. I'm not saying that at all. But I think what Paul just kind of hit at, now whether that was a, a foiled attempt, whether it was the, the, the explosive package went off to, uh, prematurely, whether it was a complete accident, you know, we don't quite know yet. However, in the world of terrorism, I, and because I've personally been involved in operations where we've seen this in real time, where it's the rope-a-dope, it's deception. It's you create an activity over here so somebody can sneak across a rat line over here. So so I'm not, I don't know if there's a connection in that, but that's what I would be doing. If I had, let's say the four of us, the four horsemen, it was imperative that we got across the border. Well, I would do a couple things at other locations. 
And you would say, well, that's just going to heighten security. Well, it's going to heighten security at the known locations, but it's also going to draw limited resources to those areas. So like what's going on in the southern border right now or or farther on the western part of the Canadian-American border? That's that's all I'm throwing out there. Mm -hmm. Just not arguing with you, Paul. I, I, I don't know yet. But if that's true, I mean, my, that's where my brain went is like, hey, th that could actually be part of something even larger that we don't yet know about. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe it was, again, speculation. Maybe it was a distraction. There's a bomb that blows up everything. There's a distraction there. Other cars are going through. Who knows what's going on there? That could have happened. Again, speculation, but sure seems like uh, plausible. Right on. Yeah, very plausible. Hey, did you guys just see who popped in? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's yeah, up, homie? What's up, fellas? Can you hear hey. me? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're coming yep. in five by five, dude. Hey, and you're from and the you're car. I apologize. <laughs> no, you're doing that whole uh, interrogation technique. You're doing change of scenery on us. So, you know, we're all, oh, yeah. out of, uh, you know, hey, how much time? Because we just started. So we're going to do our normal little, two, you know, three to five minute, everybody current events, fast and furious. And then we're going to spend about 45 minutes talking about the, you know, what is it that you give thanks to? Now, I know you've got a busy schedule. I actually didn't expect to see you today. So, um, do you got time to hang out for a couple minutes or do you want to just jump in right now with your, no, I got, I got a little bit. I just dropped my kid off at the uh, gym behind me. He has training going on right now. So uh, none of us <laughs> believe that you have kids in sports at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, no, I did. I did like that last other set of videos you put posted though, too. Your, your kids are crushing it in the football. Dude. World. Yeah. Both of them are playing. They're each on for their age and group or age and division. They're one of each one of eight teams in the country playing for the national championships next week. So, wow, or in two weeks, That's I guess. Dope. Everybody, Freaking insane. It's insane. That's awesome. That's awesome. I never played for a team that won any game. So, <laughs> this is all new <laughs> world for me. <laughs> well, hey, so we just started. Uh, you just heard Paul started with his uh, current event, which is there was that um, explosion at the port of entry up in uh, in um, in um, God dang it um, uh, Niagara Niagara Falls. Yep, at the I can't remember what it's called. That's why I was trying. There's a very specific name for that one, like yep. the Freedom something. Or Rainbow something. Bridge is what is it called, Paul? Rainbow Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Something like that. So, so we just kind of briefly discussed that. Uh, do you want to step in and just say like something that you're tracking in current events? You know, again, you know how we do the little three to five minutes, what you think's going on before we get into the, uh, the main topic, which tonight is for what, you know, what, what is it that you're giving thanks for this year? Hey. But right now, but right now we're doing that little mad, you know, mad minute, you know, down and dirty, you know, mm -hmm. three to five minutes, uh, current event thing. You got something? We'll come to you next. Yeah, I mean, all I got is I obviously like a lot of people and especially in our former profession are watching the events of Israel and Ukraine. I mean, <laughs> you know, we you know, we have friends over there and they're the ones doing a lot of the work. So just hoping that they're staying safe, doing the job, taking care of what we got to take care of. But I watch that pretty closely. Okay, well, that wasn't much of a statement or a current event. Uh, does anybody want to like start picking them apart? Like, why do we keep giving money to these things? I mean, that's hey, oh. I get it. <laughs> well, I I can add real quick because uh, uh, Dave actually gave me a great uh, thing to dovetail on that was going to be part of mine, but I'll just piggyback off of his. But um, I do find it very interesting that Jen Stoltenberg, who is one of the head guys for NATO, right? Um, had recently come out uh, amidst and now we all remember like how you know nato and so many of these other countries are just like the russians after they get done in ukraine they're going to push west and roll over everybody or try to anyways right like that's their thing they're they're the big bads of for whatever reason and you know but now jen stoltenberg is just like hey balkans i just want you to know like there is no military threat from Russia. So I think I think the shift in tone is is very odd because they spent the better half of what a year and a half to almost two years of basically like the Russians will come for you. They will like basically like they are a thief in the night. They will come to you. 
and kill you in your bed. And now Jen Stoltenberg is like Balkans, like just calm down. Like it's guys, it's going to be fine. Uh, the Russians aren't militarily planning anything. It's like, why, like after that much time, like why are they, uh, you know, <laughs> why, why is there such a tonal shift? So like you, Dave was talking about Ukraine and I, I had to throw that in there because I think it's very interesting that that all of a sudden is like 360, you know? So I, I think Jen Stoltenberg is just generally a confused person. I, I don't know, but. Anybody want to respond to both Dave and Redbeard there on the whole Ukrainian piece? I'll throw it in there because, well, yeah. well, actually, no, let's go over to Blackbeard because my comment, my down and dirty, you know, mad minute is going to actually mm -hmm. encompass that a little bit. So I'll save my comments. Perfect. Uh, let's come over to Blackbeard. Blackbeard, what are you tracking? What is it that you want people to be, you know, aware of or focused or thinking about here besides the, what you want to give thanks for? Well, <clears throat> for me, um, it all comes down to the incentivization structure that we have in place throughout not only this country, but throughout Western civilization. And I know, um, or at least I'm of the opinion that there are um, multiple reasons that we are involved in these conflicts. And um, I'm not going to go into any great depth in most of those, but I will say that for me, most of this stuff comes down to two different things. Um, one of them is the desire of the international ruling class to establish a particular kind of new power structure. And the other is the um, last vestiges of a geriatric society that is, I think, concerned at the level of awareness that the average person is begin beginning to become aware of mm -hmm. in terms of um, what's happening and why it's happening and that there's a certain element perhaps of panic involved, not necessarily that, they're, um, that they've lost control, but perhaps that they're losing a bit of control. And I think it always had to go this way because as the measures that they take become more overt and desperate, it brings, um, it brings people that even are um, not very uh, observant to, to a certain level of understanding that makes it a little bit Dip, more difficult to implement certain things which are contrary to their uh, interests. No. Okay. Anybody want to jump in on that? Comments? Additions? I, I think I'll let that one stand. Well, Blackbeard uh, did a good job, so. Okay, well, uh, so I'm the last person in the, in the, the mad minute mm -hmm. here, so I'm just going to kind of use this to dovetail it into two different directions, because uh, both uh, Blackbeard here it has mentioned something and, and Redbeard. So have you already, well, and so is Dave to that uh, note. Well, yeah. honestly, Paul, but I, I'm trying to think about the thankful part. So everything Blackbeard said, you know, the other, I think there's another way, well, another way of potentially looking at that, which is, you know, being thankful for people waking up. So the thing, my mm -hmm. mad minute, the thing that I'm focused on right now, in addition to what Paul just said, because once I saw that, I'm like, okay, What's really going on? You know, was that a foiled attempt, a failed attempt? Uh, did, you know, is, is it just a merely coincidence and it was just a, a vehicular, you know, me mechanical failure? Shit, seriously, for all they know, we, what if we find out they were driving an electric vehicle? I mean, those things are blowing up left and right. Maybe it wasn't yeah. anything related to terrorism at all. But right now on its surface level, it, it does have all those, uh, the, the hallmarks or the earmarks of, hey, this looks nefarious. And then from my perspective, what Paul was saying, combined with those other 20 people from Romania trying to, you know, dump across the border quickly, that gets me like, okay, I got to really be looking 360 because something else is, is taking place somewhere else in the system. Uh, but then, you know, so for me, that's part of the, you know, the mad minute, but, but my real focus was going to be kind of, I'll bring it back into uh, David and to Redbeard. But my thing is, you know, I hope everybody, but kind of tied into Blackbeard, I hope people are waking up because we should be asking ourselves, why do we continue to give money? And why are we giving money to some of the countries mm -hmm. that we're still giving money to? I mean, I'm sure everybody has seen reports and maybe you haven't, maybe you're, you know, maybe we're, again, we're just the weirdos and we spend too much time looking at some of this, uh, this news that's out there. And it's not from mainstream media, obviously you got to go do your own research, but 
why are we still giving aid packets to Afghanistan? Why are we still giving money to Iran? Iran, mm -hmm. and, and look, there's still a huge issue going on within our State Department with potential Iranian infiltrations, you know, from an intelligence perspective that, are, that, have, that have been controlling and setting agendas, money still flowing. Look, again, go do your own research. You can trace this all the way back to the Obama administration when pallets of cash were being shipped over there on the weekends in the middle of the night. So there's something going on. And then where does that go as far as how Iran ties into the IRGC, Quds for Hezbollah, Hamas, the, you know, the Israeli thing? So for me, I just want to simply ask, as we get into what we give thanks for, is, you know, I saw a little article, but, you know, some people in New York pissed off. Like, how is it all these illegal immigrants in our country here in New York, they're getting all the free handouts, right? We're, we're a low income family. These facilities are set up for us on Thanksgiving and we're showing up to, you know, get our free meal or a free turkey. And there's nothing left because it's all gone to illegal immigrants. So yeah. I think you're seeing a bunch of people for, unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, I, I always say, I, I don't think Mike Tyson has kicked enough ass yet on, uh, you know, he hasn't punched most of us in the face enough, but people are starting to wake up and I'm just going to turn that. So that's my little mad minute, but mm -hmm. I'm going to dump that right into the segue at the segue into what do we give thanks for? And I'm just going to give, Started off there, see if this dovetails with one, what anyone else says. I'm at least giving thanks that there's still hope. There's a grain of hope that the pain, the damage, people are starting to see it. People are starting to wake up. Some media outlets are starting to cover stuff. Now, mainstream media, I would always say you got to question their motives and what it is that they're really trying to accomplish by talking about any of these issues. But at least some people are starting to wake up. They're starting to wake up and say, hang on a second. You know, the, and you've seen this. Everybody's seen this, you know, from Chicago to New York to all these like sanctuary cities are suddenly like, hey, this really isn't cool. We need to ship them back yeah. out to the red states. You know, and the red states are like, no, you guys want this. Here you go. And I don't wish pain on anyone, especially on Thanksgiving weekend. But I, I think it how else do we solve this? How else do people wake up and start making actual change and holding politicians accountable? So I, at least my giving thanks, and I'll throw in a couple of things later, but I'm at least giving thanks that to some degree, people are starting to wake up and they're sensing, I don't know if you want to say the danger we're in, but they're starting to wake up and Argentina, and that's where I'm going to leave it because I, some other people might chime in. And Argentina is another bellwether type of event where you, you see a country that's been socialist mm -hmm. for so long, like our inflation right now, you yeah. You want to talk inflation? Go look at look look at Argentina. I mean, just go again. Do your own research. There's been times yeah. where they've had like 150 percent inflation, right? So, mm -hmm. but the people of Argentina apparently have reached that, that enough. We're we're done. And matter of fact, and then that just broke just before we started. And then same in, yeah. with the Dutch. They just elected um, uh, a more. I don't know what you want to call that guy. And I in his name, but I probably would slaughter it anyway. It's a Dutch name, and it's it somebody knows that you can chime in, but they just elected him. So there's, there's hope. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. there's a little bit of hope. Maybe people are waking up. So I give thanks to that. Yeah, there it is. That was my giving thanks. Um, David, I kind of want to come to you next. Yeah. Go I was ahead. just going to say, I had a similar thought. I don't know if I probably processed it as thankful or grateful, but the idea that people are waking up um, mm -hmm. anytime a major event or some sort of disaster happens, you know, like all the protests on campus right now, I think people are starting to really ask themselves are what they're teaching at college campuses. Is that, is this what the result is all these anti-Israel or anti-Semitic or whatever type of protest that they're doing but it's happening at a, in a large number of universities and people are starting to question finally, wow, is this woke crap at the universities for real? Like we keep hearing about it from these right wing dudes who are like, you know, telling everybody, Hey, the universities are crap. This is what they're teaching and all that. And now I think a lot of people are starting to really question like the narrative, you know, that the universities aren't radical, but, maybe they actually are, you know, so I don't, I think uh, kind of, yeah, anytime there's a big event and it sheds light on, you know, another problem, I don't think anybody foresaw everybody being anti-university at the moment, like even liberals being anti, like, Hey, what's going on over there? We got a problem with what they're teaching. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think 
it's good that people are waking up to that. I, you know, obviously the reasons for it are bad, but the fact that people are starting to open their eyes and say, Hey, these kids are nuts. What the hell were their parents doing, raising them to be like this? And what are those universities doing to indoctrinate them even further like this? So yeah. maybe that's a, you know, the good side of a bad event. Before I turn it to, over to you guys to chime in, uh, one of the things that David just said, and, and, and I saw a study on this, and, and I wish I would have made a note of it because I would have put the link in here. But just from a, th- from a psychological level, there's a lot of people who are starting to examine the parents of the individuals. And so, yeah, you, David, do, do you know that article or do you know kind of what I'm getting at? I know what you're getting at. I mean, okay. being heavily yeah. involved in the kids stuff, I see parent differences in parenting every day. Well, and then so th- this psychologist is trying to, you know, this group of psychologists are trying to make the argument that what we're really seeing is really, you know, kind of going back to Besmanoff as we talked about him last episode, is the the long-term result of, you know, it's it's been a generation or two of people who've been corrupted. And now you've got a bunch of parents who are conveying, what, you know, negatively or however you want to phrase that, you know, or, or, or how you want to view that, but they're projecting their perspectives onto their children. And their children really at this point are nothing more than pawns in that person's warped psychological perspective of the world reality uh, things that now we're kind of getting a little bit into a controversial area, but I think it's still worth, we've only been talking for about 20 minutes. Does anybody want to add to that before we go into the thanks? Anybody got yeah. to say Paul? Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I am also thankful for, um, you know, the younger people waking up and seeing through the, the fog they've been presented with. Um, my concern is that the leadership we have in this country they're letting them get away with blaming a senile old man. He's not the problem. The problem is the party behind him. The problem are the people that are supporting him, the people that are influencing these policies, the people that are getting these judges elected, the people that are contributing to getting you know elections. I, I don't know. I just saw a couple of judges say that there was ballot stuffing and this election doesn't get. So I, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist there. That happened. So we don't have that, and we need to influence the narrative. Unfortunately, the media, who was, they were already, you know, leaning left, even during normal times, right? Now, they've been raised by the same group that taught these younger people. These are, trust me, they're not that much older than some of the kids today. They're definitely mostly millennials, and they've been corrupted with this, and it's mostly ideology and, and all kinds of other stuff. The media will not let us get that narrative out. We're going to, you know, Musk is trying to fight that. And I don't agree with him on, you know, at least not until he, you know, he bought Twitter and started uh, encouraging free speech. I didn't agree with much of anything he had to say. I thought he was smart, but they're attacking him. They will try and take him down. They will try and destroy Twitter. And it's so obvious. So why don't, why don't people see this? And I think that the younger people are seeing this. They're like, wait a minute, something's not right here. So, you know, I I am encouraged that we're taking a step, but I'm also discouraged that those on the conservative side, let's say, uh, liberal side, true liberal side, are not blaming Democrats and Republicans that are basically stealing from us every day. And that's both parties, right? Just because the party in power is worse than the other one doesn't mean that the Republicans aren't bad either. You're muted, Mark. It, what is Bongino's thing along the lines of what you just said? Um, uh, the Republicans aren't the solution to all, all of your problems, but the Democrats clearly are. The Democrats clearly are the cause of all your problems. So to what you're saying, yeah, neither side of the aisle is is innocent in this. And I hope, and this is my comment, aware of that is not to be political, but I hope we all, I hope this is the moment where the pain threshold is getting to that point where it's causing a lot of the average person who's really, you know. Like David, you know, I've got, you know, he's running around with his kids. He's got sports. He's got a job, you know, family, you know, you don't have a lot of time to be thinking about this. That pain threshold has to get pretty high for most people to finally take a breath and say, all right, that's it. I'm taking my one night of the week off. I'm going down to the parent teacher, you know, conference, or I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I'm going to start getting vocal about this, or I'm going to the, 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 the town hall meeting with the mayor and I'm, you know, voicing my complaints or, you know, 
but I, th I think we're starting to see the cracks. And then my final comment on that, and then, cause you just mentioned uh, Musk and that's what's freaking them out because they're losing their grip on the monopoly over media, over communication and knowledge communication is power, right? And they're losing their grip on that. And you're at whoever said it. Um, I can't remember if that was David or Paul, but, uh, but you're obviously right. They're trying to destroy Musk right now. And, and it's obvious why they used to love him and now they want to destroy him. So, all right. As we continue around, anybody got anything more to add to where we're just kind of going before we get into the thrust of what we're giving thanks for Blackbeard or Redbeard? Not I. Blackbeard? Nothing. All right. Well, then why don't we go uh, for my screen? Let's go clockwise. Um, let's kind of come over to um, Redbeard. Why don't you start it off? Like, what, what are you giving thanks yeah. for this year? And then we'll just go around the horn. Um, and then we'll once we get back over to you, sir, then that'll be our outro for tonight. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple different things and it's, it's not necessarily even something as it necessarily pertains to me. Of course, I could be extremely cliche, uh, which is never bad, but, you know, uh, first having gratitude for everything that I have, um, you know, I mean, the, the thing of it is, is you don't just get stuff and you don't just get people in your life. You have to, you have to work at it. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes it's nice, being able to step back and take a little bit of gratitude for the people you do keep in your life and the things that you do have. So out of being somewhat cliche, that's one thing. Um, now, one thing that I, I, I think that I can also be hopeful or grateful for is we in this country, you know, as, as some people had alluded to uh, previously, um, there, there is a change that is occurring and uh, before I get into what I think part of that is, I, I want to preface with, I, I think that at one point, um, perhaps several decades ago, I think we went through essentially an apocalypse of the intellectual and um, to where you didn't have enough people that were uh, being intellectually driven or taking up new pursuits or endeavors. And I'm not talking about like the cliche hobbies. Um, really challenging themselves. And I think now, given the landscape that we have, you are starting to people see people get back into to reading books a lot more. You're starting to see people get away from their TVs and their internet and uh, pursuing and learning new skills, uh, you know, spending more time with their families, getting into the garage and doing a, a father-son project or a father-daughter project or, or a family project, you know, whether it's fixing a bike or uh, even just showing your kid how to do things or just, you know, if you're a single person, just trying to figure out how something works. I growing up, I did that all the time. I would take stuff apart and figure out how it works. And so I think the positive there is we are going through uh, an intellectual renaissance, if you will, to where people are kind of rediscovering not only themselves uh, as human beings, but as ourselves as Americans, but more importantly, ourselves as, uh, you know, intellectual beings, um, you know, and I think that is a hopeful thing that you are starting to see more and more of this take place. Um, and with that, uh, you're starting to see almost a, a renaissance as it pertains to liberty. A lot more people are starting to see um, the value in liberty, the value in, in, in rights, uh, especially in places that I have become so uh, desolate, uh, seemingly desolate with these things, you know, they're starting to realize what they don't have. Um, and, you know, and I hope that those people can, you know, take what they re now recognize in and, and do something about that. So I'm thankful for this sense of American Renaissance, if you will, and this, this changing tide, uh, because it is important. Uh, again, not only as Americans, but who we are, as human beings. Um, and I, I hope that we start to see future generations uh, use their, you know, put their heads in books more and get outside and, and, you know, run around in the wilderness and take up learning new skills and stuff like that. Cause that's what made America. That was my entire childhood, Mark, Dave, you know, Blackbeard, Paul, I'm sure you guys to some degree had something like that to where uh, you could kind of just, disappear in, in like an hour or two as a kid learning these things. And so I, I'm happy to see that that's coming back. 
Um, so, you know, my, my thankfulness is, is very much predicated on that. Um, because that to me is what's going to ultimately not only change our, our country for the better, um, and imbue a sense of not only personal responsibility, but a sense of individual drive and innovation. Um, you know, but it's going to change the world. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. I'm very happy again, myself that, uh, uh, I started to get into a book series that I'd really liked. Uh, Mark, I know was looking into it and it's, I'm here to say it's fantastic. Um, it really, really inspires me to want to do a lot more in terms of reading and really taking a lot more time to be a little bit more critical about how I read things, how I look at things and overall just how I look at life because, uh, uh, works of, uh, writing are very, very important to who we are as human beings. So. I'm happy for a lot of those things. Um, and that's pretty much it, Mark. I mean, it's, it's very few, but, um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of good positive things there that, uh, we, we are heading in the right direction. It's just, it's not going to be, it's going to be a matter of inches, not miles. Like we shouldn't try and rush this. We should try and take this as it goes, because if you try and coax it along too hard, we're going to derail the whole thing again. So. I'll leave it at that. You're muted, Mark. I really wish I had a, that button was located in different, cause I'm up here looking at you guys and over on this side of the screen, but my unmute button is way down in an area where I'm not looking, you know, it's not my you know, line of sight. Wish there was like an automatic thing, but um, does anyone disagree with the last part of, or, or have a point of contention with the last, the last thing that Redbeard said, anybody? I'm wondering if anybody else, so I'm going to throw this out there and I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's, it, it, this would be a matter of technique, you know, mm -hmm. baby steps are for babies, you know, like it's not a marathon. You know, I, I hear you, we've all heard those in our, you know, our, our workplaces and our lives, you know, and, and Jeremy, you kind of said it, you know, it's, it's inches, you know, we got to, so on one hand, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to take every in every win, even mm -hmm. if it's inch by inch, it's got to be incremental. But there's another part of me that just totally disagrees with that perspective or that, that, uh, that, that tactic, you know, that procedure, mm -hmm. right. You know, baby steps are for babies. You know, that's something I was, I just remember one of my first tours, you know, in the agency and everybody's like, Oh, this is, you know, this is a marathon, not a sprint. I'm like, I'm here for, for a year. I can sprint for a year. Maybe you can't do it, but I can, I'm going to sprint for a year and dedicate, you know, like, so I'm a little bit, I know where you're coming from and I don't disagree with it, but I'm also like, man, I don't know, man. I think now it's time to pour fuel on the fire. Uh, honestly. You know, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. I'm just kind of maybe yeah. disagreeing with how we go about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I, I think perceptively to it, what it comes down to Mark is it also depends on how those, uh, inches are accumulated. Now you can rapidly yeah. accumulate, uh, inches in a certain spot, uh, but it might take a little bit more time in a different spot. And I would say if, if, if anything, in order for us to have, especially a very Liberty oriented Renaissance you know, or, or, uh, change. Uh, I think what we need to have before that is an intellectual one, because if you, if you do not have a revolution of the mind, you're never going to have the physical follow suit. So, um, it, it's very much situationally dependent. And, and I do agree with you on that. Like it, it, it depends on where you can sprint and where you should take some time, but yeah. And see now there, I, I agree with what you just said there, right? Because mm -hmm. again, you know, it's it, you're applying different TTPs to different, you know, operations, yep. different events, different. Uh, yep. Yeah. So yeah, here mm -hmm. I can, here I got to slow it down and take it inch by inch. And then, but yep. at the same time, concurrently, I can pour the fuel on over here. So, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right on. All right. Um, anything else to add there, Redbeard, or anybody else want to chime in? Otherwise I'm going to go, well, I keep got to do it that way. I'm going to go over to Blackbeard. Yeah, no, I'm good, man. I, like I said, super simple. So Anybody got anything to add on Jeremy's comments or, or argue with? No, I, I, I agreed with him until he clarified and then you agreed with him. And now I agree with that part. Cause that's what I was going to say. There are certain <laughs> situations that you need yeah. to go slow and some you don't. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Well, and I think that's actually, that that's a great point to kind of end that little yeah. 
discussion or, or, or you know, whatever you want to call it, conflict. Yeah, it, we, we're just all basically acknowledging what we've done in 30 some podcasts. It's like yeah. it, this isn't a cookie cutter. It, this thing will work here. Yeah. This thing will work there. And you just got to be open minded and realize like, hey, I'm going to try this technique and it might work. It might not. And if it's working and if it's meeting my objectives, good to go. Yep. If it's not working, then I got to change my techniques and I got to change how I'm doing things. Right. I got to change my game plan. Yeah. Well, and, and as and David, would... kids would say, you know, I've got to start blitzing more or I've got to, yeah. you know, I, I got to do, you know, pass defense or run defense. I don't know. whatever. I, I would only emphasize that it's a, a, on a final, very final note, like little things like you have to, you, the little things are important to the big picture. And if you miss some of the little things, you're going to have an incomplete picture. It's not saying don't look at the big picture. You should step back and analyze the big picture. So you have an idea of where the pieces fit, but you have to understand that like little things, whether it's little habits we as individuals do, or it's little battles along the way, they do amount to something. So if you, if, especially if you perceive it as like, oh, this is trivial, that may not be the case. You just don't recognize where that piece fits yet. So. I like that. I'm going to leave on that note right there. Um, yep. And I can't remember what it is, but it's some, you know, ancient Japanese writing. I can't remember if it was Zen or it could have been Musashi, uh, Go Rin No Show or something, but I can't remember where it is, but there's, mm -hmm. you know, some ancient Japanese philosopher that talks about, you know, it's, it's, it's really the small thing. So to your point, Jeremy, mm -hmm. if we stay focused and if we can do the small things and do them well, the big mm -hmm. things, you know, why get worried about that? Focus right. on the small things and you can start making the larger issues comport form mm -hmm. to what it is that you're accomplishing and at the, that smaller, more individual yeah. or community level. Yep. All right. Blackbeard coming over to you, sir. What are you giving thanks for? Well, um, I'm thankful for things that in the light of mortality um, have meaning. So, like, for example, if um, somebody said once, I can't remember who said it, but it's something to the effect that if you were, if you knew that tomorrow was your last day on earth, you know, consider in your mind or in your heart the things that would still really matter to you in light of that. And um, so for me, that's things like the friends that I have. It's uh, the family that I'm able to um, visit with from time to time. I'm thankful when I have um, my health. Um, I know those seem kind of like trite, but if but if I was really going to die tomorrow, you know, I, I think that those are the things that I would think on. Um, so, yeah. Oh, you're muted, Mark. Yeah, and Paul <laughs> just sent me a message saying we need to get you streamed, you know, <laughs> quick mute unmute you know uh, maybe i need to get going back to that milgram experiment or the skinner box maybe every time i forget to hit the mute or unmute i get a shock or something like that you know all right boys we're setting up a gofundme at this point let's make it happen <laughs> all right but so blackbeard had an uncharacteristic characteristically yeah. short comment there but very poignant um who wants very to jump suspense. in on that there's some room there I actually, all my actions towards how I raise my kids is with that idea of if I were to die tomorrow, would I have looked back on my deathbed, right? You know, like you hear the, um, I think it was somebody at the agency who reminded me to put family first and not necessarily the agency, but do, obviously do the job, but mm -hmm. basically said, Nobody on their deathbed has ever looked back and said, I wish I worked more. I wish I spent more time deployed or I wish any of these things. They said, I wish I spent more time with my kids. And basically what Blackbeard said is how I live. It's my philosophy or how I live with my kids. I got my kids until they're 18 or so, you know, and yeah. if I were to get terminally sick tomorrow to end up in the hospital, I could look back and say, you know what? I spent every time I could with my kids. I did right by them. I put my values, you know, I impressed my value values upon them. Like I did it. I feel like that's a good philosophy to live as if, you know, tomorrow's your last day. Are you doing or what in what I'm doing today? Does that make tomorrow valuable? You know? Mm -hmm. So I like that philosophy. That's just yeah. big in my world. Anybody want to add to that? Well, I, I think that I, 
again, I agree with all of this. And one of my, you know, I could jump into my reasons I'm thankful. And, you know, I, I'm thankful that, you know, my children are doing well. They're learning. They're getting past the indoctrination. They're all adults now. So they're getting past the indoctrination of the school systems. And, you know, they, they some of them aren't all, all conservative, right? They're not even libertarians with it. That's fine. But they got past that. Um, they no longer think I'm crazy because I'm a quote prepper because I like to can things and and you know have other things animals and so on. Uh, but one thing I would like to say is, and this relates to Blackbeard and David, is my kids would say if I died tomorrow, my kids would say that I did a good job in in, in helping them and raising them in my part in my job there. I'm never going to be satisfied. I, I will never think I did a good enough job. I try and do more and more and I can't in my, it's so frustrating, but I still want to do more, you know, each day or, you know, each year do something more to help them regardless. And, you know, I'm not talking about financially. I'm just talking about as a father, you know, train them and help them learn more and, and guide them in the right direction. Let them make their own decisions. But, you know, so I would say that, you know, and maybe I'm just a pessimist. It's just my personality. Uh, I'm an epic failure, but they would say that I did a good job. So, you know, I think that, and, and again, also, um, you know, family and friends, of course, as, as Blackbeard mentioned, I'm, I'm thankful for, for them as well. Um, you might think I don't have too many friends, right? But you know, I, I have plenty of friends, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, a little bit of an isolationist in a sense, because I work, work from home. So, you know, what can I do? Uh, but I, you know, I, I get out talk to the neighbors, talk to the family. I use Zoom a lot, which is not my favorite thing to do. But, um, yeah. You know, I just want to throw this out there and I'm, and I'm, and I'm not making an, uh, uh, an excuse for me. I mean, I, I've said it on the podcast before. I've said it in person to, you know, lots of people throughout the course of my adult life. Um, you know, we're, we all are, are, we're on our own path. And that path can, you know, go in, in a multitude of different directions and, you know, side journeys and adventures and, and enlightenment and, you know, horror and sadness and enjoy all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy, you know, for anyone out there, you know, especially you guys, you know, um, but, but I'm happy for anyone, you know, who realizes that the path they're on, you know, the family and their children and, and how meaningful that is. So I kind of just want to echo, I'm not in that situation, you know, so, and, and the odds are that's never going to be. I'm, I'm, I'm old now. You know, I, I, I don't want to say, I'm, and again, this isn't a woe is me. I'm just saying, so to that point, though, it's so not really a disagreement with you guys. I'm just also throwing this up for if anyone's watching this. Hey, if that's not the path you're on and or if that's not where you are, that doesn't mean you can't get onto that path. But it also isn't bad if that isn't your path that you're supposed to walk in life anyway. You know, so here, without throwing me under the bus anymore, I'll throw a, a, an old friend under the bus who hadn't deployed to combat. And I'm in the agency, he's in the military. <clears throat> and he was just like, you know, always lamenting the fact that he hadn't been downrange. I'm like, dude, are you serious? And this is now I'm, I'm a little bit more, I've been in the agency for a while and, and I'm kind of starting to see things differently. And my point to him was like, dude, you're doing great work where you are. You're making sure that people are deploying, are deploying correctly. And, you know, you're looking out for your soldiers. That's what we're supposed to do as leaders. And you're, you're trying to raise a family. That's the, why don't you focus on that? You know, whereas, and honestly, I think to the, to wh wh everything we're talking about that just ate him up and that ended up probably, I don't know if it caused a divorce, but it was, I'm sure it had some factor. It played some role in a divorce that he ended up having because he as a man just couldn't reconcile that. So I guess what I'm just trying to say is, you know, you, you, the individual have to find your own path. And, and even there'll be times where you're down on yourself and like, Oh, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. Okay. We'll take that negative energy and turn it into something that you can still do in a positive, find another positive path to start walking down. For me, the business I'm running, you know, this podcast, trying to be more vocal. Okay. Maybe I'm not going to have a family and I'm not going to be able to experience the joy that you guys are, you know, are the path you guys are on, but that doesn't mean I give up. That means I can still use my energy, my resources and my knowledge and experiences to try to help people, find the most fulfilling path or, or at least maybe not find it, but to start developing 
or not even developing skills. You guys see what I'm trying to say? It's like, realize, mm -hmm. don't get down on yourself and realize that just yep. because you're not Delta Force or something, that's, that's not the end of the world. Or if you're not out there, you know, doing CQB every day. Okay, so what? You know, like, like what Paul, you just kind of said, you know, how is it that people used to think we were crazy? You're like, oh, you're into canning and you're into prepping. You know, like, yeah, how are you not? I mean, natural disasters happen all the time. I think more and more people are starting to wake up like, oh, Paul may have been on some. Maybe I should have some chickens. Maybe I should have three months of food. So I think there's other things that we can still do in a very positive direction that don't necessarily, I don't know. Does that make sense, fellas? Or am I just kind of, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. trying to respond a little bit to you guys, you know, because, you know, I'm not going to lie a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I probably missed that, that train. You know, that's a, and now it'll be a long wait for a train that's not coming back. So, okay, well then while I'm sitting here waiting, maybe it will, but then focus my energies on doing other positive things. Does that make a little bit more sense? Fine I see purpose. David smiling. So what do you got, yeah, David? Fine, you just find purpose in your life. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. Whether my purpose is my kids, my family, you know, and being thankful is uh, thinking about what I'm thankful for and grateful for is an exercise that I conduct personally every single day, you know? watching the health of my family, watching the community that we're growing up in. And, you know, I probably should send this to my wife, but what I'm super thankful for in my life is my wife. She's not, I mean, you know, she's not passive. She's not someone who's just like along for the ride. She's very active. She's very upfront. She's very, um, you know, purpose driven and having two boys is changed her entire direction, right? Like she's fully on board of dedicating her lives to sports and baseball, this football, that, I mean, we were just in the Bay area for a football game. We're going to Florida next week and she's all on board and it's not, she's just along for the ride, but she's an active participant and having that in a partner is huge because we're a great team together. And I'm, I have a lot of friends whose wives are, they're still great, just a little bit more passive. They're long for the ride or they want to go do their own thing. You know, they're whatever mm -hmm. it is. And I mm -hmm. happen to have the one who isn't just along for the ride, but it's freaking driving the train. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for that because my boys, she tolerates all the craziness. I mean, my, my kid's literally at the gym behind me with the trainer <laughs> right now. Like, She's totally like, she doesn't question it. She's like, yeah, that's an expectation. She knows when the kids are slacking off. She's like, Hey, you guys got to be doing this. You know, have you, you know, like you guys have goals. You got to go after your goals as well. Like she's fully on board and it's not just, I'm not just the crazy one. It's both of us being crazy. So <laughs> I'm, I'm for sure thankful for, for mm -hmm. having her in my life and obviously for my kids and the health and, Another thing I'm so grateful for, and I'm seeing it a lot now, I'm in a small area. I'm in Reno, and not just – Reno's maybe a half million people, the whole metropolitan area. Um, I'm in, like, South Reno, so even smaller. And our football teams just did a community fundraiser because going to Florida is sort of expensive for us on the West Coast. My older son's raised over $40,000. Wow. And my younger son's about 25 ish right now and probably going to bring in another five in the next week. Nice. That's just community support. That's people chipping in, um, you know, a little bit of money there. It's local businesses throwing down money. It's the large businesses, you know, doing sponsorships and that kind of stuff. And you never see, or it's just one of those things. You don't see it so visibly until it affects yep. you how strong a community is, how much they support us. And they don't have to support us. Like if you look at how charities work, charities are always going after, you know, to help the disadvantaged, to help the people who need more, who, who are struggling to get by, whatever it is you get. I mean, obviously I, everybody knows what I'm talking about and we're just a football team and mm -hmm. arguably a, uh, a wealthier part of our town who probably no one really needs the help necessarily, but the community is out there to support the kids, make sure that the kids do get this opportunity, make sure that the few on the team who do need the help are going to get it. And they just came out 
incre incredible numbers. And I'm grateful that I live in a community like this that is so charitable, that's taking care of their own. And it's a great lesson for my kids to learn as well, that these people do care. Yeah. They're out there. And, you know, I get the I, it's just one of those things. I'm grateful for everything I have in my life. I get to live a very blessed life, blessed community, full circle from career, you know, back in the day with the agency, having guys around like Mark, you know, who always took me under the wing. I was always just the random guy <laughs> and everybody was there, you know, giving me pointers, taking me along, doing training for me, helping me, giving me guidance and advice and, every path or, every, you know, every stop along this path of life, I've been grateful for the people that have been in my life. Well, see, that's what I like about what you're saying. And I kind of want to make one little comment and turn on to Redbeard because I think he's got something to add to it. Yeah. I don't care if you're living the most wealthiest affluent suburb or wherever the heck it is. People, community, mm -hmm. still having feeling, still having that sense of pride and duty and, and, and responsibility coming together yeah. How is that wrong? Well, you know, oh, you're only doing it for a, a, a set, you know, in a wealthy community for a football team. So should they not do anything? I mean, like, you know, like yeah. you could sit there and make the argument like, well, what I should be giving money to, you know, some foreign aid organization. You know, we all know yeah. where that money's going. It's into the pocket of the wealthy, you know, like, you know, the corrupt wealthy, you know, the, the mm -hmm. tin pot dictators and things of that nature or the organizations we could all point to a million organizations, maybe not a million, but, you know, 999,000 who take your money and, you know, and only 10% of proceeds actually go to the charity. The rest of it goes to, you know, like give themselves huge, you know, uh, salaries mm -hmm. and all the infrastructure. So, so I, I, I kind of like what you just said, and I don't care yeah. what town or community or city where it's taking place. That's a community doing community things. And that's pretty awesome. Redbeard, does that kind of segue into what you said in the, the chat or or you got yeah, to so like, that in your own it, direction? It does because like I, I do think it kind of falls in that category of like just being human, which is um I you know it, it it might sound kind of I don't know campy or cliche, but I'm I'm happy to be able to feel like to to genuinely like feel something, you know. Uh and I guess what I mean by that is like, I haven't lost my sense of self or my sense of humanity in a world that seems to have gone completely insane. But I have to remind myself too, that like what we perceive as insane has historically been going on for well before that any of us were even a remote thought, um, you know, but there's, it's, I, I think being able to feel something allows you to be empathetic. Um, it allows you to see things from, from other people's perspectives. It, it, it allows you to be, uh, it sounds kind of weird, but like emotionally available. Maybe it's not weird, but emotionally available. Um, and it allows you to want to help other people. It allows you to want to be a part of other people's lives to make meaningful connections to help your community to build not only a better community a better state a better country um but just a better world like we i i feel like when you become numb or desensitized uh which there are people out there like you just don't you don't care and um i feel like i feel like with all of us i, I think we still all feel and feel very much and uh i'm very thankful to myself to be able to feel so you're muted mark stupid mute button dave <laughs> <laughs> you want to add to that sir well one thing i mean going back to just the last comment about um you know donating to just a you know, a, a more affluent football team is it's also teaching the kids everything that we're teaching them ourselves mm -hmm. about the results of hard work, the results of sacrifice, you mm -hmm. know, playing football, playing sports at the level the boys are playing takes a huge amount of effort, a huge amount of sacrifice personal for them. Like they don't get to have sleepovers at the same level as a lot of their friends. It's, they got baseball practice at nine. 
you know, or a baseball game in the rain and snow mm -hmm. like this past weekend, it's it, it it's rewarding to them knowing that these people are out there for them, that their hard work isn't going unnoticed, that these are values that they could take into the future, into the yeah. into the world that they're going to exist in knowing, hey, you know, we reward people who put in the work. We reward people who put in the effort and the time and it comes back and I love it. It's, it's yeah. amazing to see it. I love how you, that's it. I was actually going to end or follow up with what you just said. It, it's still teaching them very valuable lessons, right? Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. you just nailed it right there. Blackbeard, do you have something to add? I kind of got a sense that you want to chime in on this a little bit too. It just got me thinking about the way that we view wealth to begin with. Yeah. And there are various kinds, but what you find, especially in a certain side of the political spectrum, but not exclusively, is that a lot of people get, they have a, a jealousy or an envy for people that have wealth. And um, it's true that, you know, there are people that they're able to garner their wealth through illicit means. I mean, that definitely happens, but there's also people who work awfully hard for it. And frankly, I'd rather live in a world where, and I don't have a lot of money. I live in a very poor area, actually, believe it or not. Um, but that said, you know, I'm, I, I'm not going to go around walking around envious of people that, that have nice things. Like I, I would prefer to live in a world where more people have more nice things, just so long as it doesn't create like, um, you know, because convenience and, and ease can, can weaken us too. And that's not necessarily good, but there's nothing inherently evil with having wealth. And um, I think, I think it, it would be better. I mean, it's, it's part of the reason that so many people wanted to come to this country. I mean, it wasn't just the freedom, but the freedom also provided the opportunity for the generation of those kinds of resources. And so I just think it's, that it's, it's a good idea to not just be grateful. Like my, my car handle fell off yesterday and my uh, windshield is busted and I got to get that repaired. And I just had to replace the water. I got all this stuff going on, but I have a car and it gets me where I need to go. And I'm grateful for that. And when I see somebody driving a really nice car, which doesn't happen a lot around here, but it happens. Um, good for them. Good for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with somebody. Yeah. I think the only, you know, without getting into the philosophical, you know, philosophical perspective of it, you know, if, you've got these really nice things because you've been stealing from people or, you know, you know, committing physical harm to people to advance your status or your position in life. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not happy for you at that point because you're committing crimes, but yeah. So somebody's being successful, like you just said, yeah. Thumbs up positive. Right. You know, matter of fact, you know, oftentimes it just is, it's another, um, it's another kick in the butt, another reminder, like, you know, Hey, can I do better? You know, maybe I need to put in a couple more hours a day. Maybe I need to be a little bit more focused, you know, maybe I need to put down that, uh, that hot pocket and that, uh, video game and, and, you know, and work a little bit harder, you know, be in the yeah. grind just a tad more. David, I know you've got a bounce here. So before we kind of start doing our outros and everything you got, how about we just give you like a little final comment or anything? Cause right. You're, you've got a bounce now. Is that about right? Yeah, I probably just got to jump okay. out in a sec, so I can finish up. Yeah, why don't you just give us your final comments on this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, sir? So, I, I mean, I don't have much. I said my piece, I, what I'm thankful for, and I'm just thankful for so much for the life we get to live. And, you know, our country is amazing, the opportunities we have, and the fact that we could keep pushing to make it better. The fact that we could keep make, having these debates say – this is the path we should be on. Some countries, they don't get that. And that's why I love some of these conversations. It's, you know, we're throwing out ideas out there and hopefully somebody in the listening public hears it and says, you know, I like that idea too. And then we start these conversations and that's how change happens. But, you know, being grateful, it's not a practice I do just around Thanksgiving. I think a lot of mm -hmm. folks, you know, and I think it would help a lot of our souls if people started thinking more about what they're grateful for on a daily basis. The second they wake up, you know, it's a general practice. It's it puts you in a better mood for the day. And you know what? It reminds you there is a lot to be thankful for out there. So, yeah, 100 percent. Damn right. 
Well, David, thank you very much for joining us. Yep. You and your family have a great Thanksgiving weekend. Yes. Hope your kids can. God bless you, sir. Yeah, I hope your kids right. continue to crush it in the sports world, and um, and yes. we'll talk to you again real soon. Yeah. And now I'm going to go be thankful to their trainer who is dedicating <laughs> his Wednesday afternoon right before Thanksgiving to help yeah, my kids a little bit better. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, David. Thank uh, you, sir. Later, right. guys. Happy right. Thanksgiving, bro. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. And Blackbeard, uh, I think you've got a pop and we're kind of wrapping it up right now. So if you've got yep. like maybe just four, I think we're, Paul, are you got to wrap up too? No, no, I, I need to respond. I didn't get to respond to David and I want to respond to Blackbeard too. So I'm like, oh, yeah. sorry. No, so, no, no. I was going to, I was going to come to you next. I'm just basically, we're just letting everybody know, you know, but I want that to hear me. That, that's that's what I mean. Oh no no I knew I actually was thank but thank you keep me on track but no I, my my mental uh, focus was I was going to come to you but Blackbeard had said he might have to bounce so I just wanted to come there and then I was going to come to you but if Blackbeard can stay a little bit I was going to go to you and then we were just going to kind of start cycling out because you yeah. hadn't spoke yeah I knew you had a couple things so mm -hmm. Blackbeard how are you doing do you have to bounce or do you got a couple more seconds oh, you're on. Yeah. Uh, I can I can do a, a, a little just a little bit more, but I, okay. I do I gave my word to somebody. I can be quick. Cool. So. I can be quick. Okay. I just I, I, I no, have no Paul. You, 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 yeah. No Paul. Paul, 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 Paul. Yeah. Paul. Exactly. You're good. You're good. Take your time, sir. All right. So I, I agree a hundred percent with what Blackbeard had to say and what David had to say. Um, I can relate to both. Um, there, there's, there's just so many things that I could say about that, but I'll, I'll keep it brief because Blackbeard has to go. The one thing I do want to say is you don't have to have children to be, to have the same influence. I have yeah. biological and stepchildren. So Mark, you, you were David's influence. He looks up to you in, in my opinion, like a father. Now maybe I'm wrong, but it, and that's why I, I wish I could have said it in front of him, but you know, it, it, it's, we all have our place here and it, it doesn't matter. So, you know, I, I, I just wanted to make that point. Um, and Blackbeard, you know, I, I absolutely, you know, I have a broken windshield and, and I, I can relate to everything else you said, but I have more to say, but I'll, I'll hold off. I want to let Blackbeard, that, I just wanted him to hear that part mm -hmm. um, and, and everything else that I, I absolutely can relate to him at certain points in my life. And, and now maybe sometimes, you know, sh stuff happens and all of a sudden when I think everything's going well, it goes to crap. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it, just that, I, I just wanted to get that in first and then I can wrap up later. Blackbeard. It's uh, I think that the greatest enemy that anybody has to fight is themselves. I know that sounds a bit cliche as well, but you know, we're the one person that we can never escape. And it's, it's very difficult to develop discipline. And I will tell you that I haven't done a good job of it. I'm, in certain aspects I have, but in a lot of aspects I haven't. And I know that it's something that, like a DB was saying, the, um, the gratitude is something that, because I, I guess maybe I'm like Paul in the sense that my, my default nature is actually very pessimistic. Um, and I have to work at it to see the light at the end of the tunnel sometimes. But I believe that we can overcome these things in our nature and that there's wisdom in understanding these things. Somebody said to me once, and I, I've said it to other people because I think that there's truth in it. It doesn't mean that I follow this practice because I don't. I worry a lot, actually, and I shouldn't, but I do. And what it is, is I heard this guy say, he, he asked, you know, well, he said, think about a problem that you have. Have I already said this before? Not, not I, sure. I Go ahead. Think so. okay. Well, think about a problem that you have and ask yourself, is there anything that I can do about this? If the answer is yes, then you have nothing to worry about. And then he said to me, you know, think about a problem that you have and ask yourself, is there anything that I can do about this? If the answer is no, then you have nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. well, very true. I've heard that before. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where now it's easy to say that, but then you get up and then you're like, Oh man, Oh, how is this going to work? Or what am I going to do? And, you know, so that's, it's, it's that it's this in here that you have to like 
mold and shape into something that that becomes an ally to you rather than a, a perpetual opponent. And if we could master this, you know, then so many of these other things would follow as a matter of course. But of course, it's 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 again, it's easy to say it isn't easy to do. But it does start with things like making a conscious decision to say, I'm grateful for this today. And maybe it's just one thing and maybe that's enough for that time. And then you go on and you move to the next thing. But it's just yeah. um, it's a it's a better way to live. And it's and it's our choice. Yeah, I just want to chime in on that because it resonates with the the other kind of and, and Redbeard started us down this path with just, you know, well, and Paul, you did too a little bit, you know, like I, I'm kind you know, as we look at the shit that's transpiring and how things have just become so upside down and, and nonsensical, you know, giving thanks that people are waking up because to Blackbeard, to your point, we've lost our way, you know, and now we focus more on our knowledge of, you know, celebrities and, and, and fashions and this kind of bullshit, as opposed to family and the, 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 the hands-on skills, like, you know, raise, even just having some chickens or doing some canning and, or hunting or fishing and spending time with family out in the wilderness, those type of skills. I think I personally give thanks that through this last, probably, you know, I don't know how you want to look at it. I mean, I guess I'd never really thought, does this go back to the fifties, the sixties or the seventies, but it kind of started somewhere in one of those eras where we, as a society, we started going away. We started drifting away. You know, maybe there was a magnetic, some strong magnet that was drawing us down this path of ease and, and, and lethargy and, 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 and just being, you know, I hate to say it, but just being lazy, you know, we've had it so nice, you know, like I, I, I'm sure everybody's heard that before and good times create, you know, soft men and so, you know, or whatever that, that saying is, but mm -hmm. maybe this is where we start to turn the corner and we start to come back into improving ourselves as people, because to Blackbeard's comment, what I really like is because improving yourself on, as a person. And I think Redbeard and, and Paul will jump in on this. That's, you know, that's your physical skills, the things that you should know how to do to stay alive that bring you closer to nature and bringing yourself closer to nature is bringing yourself closer to God, whatever you want to call God. For me, it's Christian, right? So, but whatever, or, 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 or nature or, uh, you know, Yahweh, whatever you want to say, but it brings you more into that, that spiritualism, that realm. And then that goes into what Redbeard said. So then now you are more, you have better empathy. You, you better understand why some people may say or think or do certain things. It helps yeah. shape your responses. It helps shape what you focus on instead of like sitting and playing video games. Maybe I need to start learning how to do more of this and this. And then suddenly you're like, where did the day go? And then you're like, oh, yeah. what did I do? And you just did 20 freaking awesome things that day. Or you did a charity or you're doing whatever. So I, I give thanks to that. And I kind of like what you were saying there, Blackbeard, because to me, I that I give thanks that maybe we're turning the corner and it's still going to be a struggle, but maybe we're going to start realizing that we all need to be better people. And I don't see how that's yeah. going to be. Well, maybe that would be bad. I don't know. But, <laughs> Paul, what do you think? Is that Would that be bad, Paul Beauregard? Now, yeah, so, that's it. so I, I don't want to keep Blackbeard much longer, but no, I, I think that, you know, I, along the lines of two more things I'm thankful for is my wife who helps the homeless on the weekends with a local church. Um, they they enjoy it, that meaning the homeless people. And, and it's simple things like she brings dog biscuits uh, for them to give their dogs and, and so on. So those type of, of activities, I think, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that she does it. I don't have the time. And unfortunately, and, and most of all, though, um, in the end, not, I shouldn't say most of all, because that, that would equally on the same plane. I'm thankful for those that protect our freedom, regardless of where they are. Those that don't can kiss my ass. And if you're in a position that you can protect my freedom and you don't because you have some agenda, you can kiss my ass. But I'm thankful for everyone else that does that, that protects our freedom, because I sure as heck am <laughs> not capable of doing that. So. <laughs> Mark, you're muted. There, I'm glad I was on mute because I started swearing when I realized I was on mute, so no one caught that one. Hey, Blackbeard, let's let you chime in on that because I know you got to bounce. Jeremy just had to go to the bathroom. He'll be right back and then he'll be taking this out anyway. So um, I know you got a bouncer, but final comments uh, or, you know, again, I don't know if you can stay for the last few minutes or but if you want to bounce, I want to give you that chance right now. 
Yeah, I'm going to head out. I, but I okay. just uh, would say, you know, that I agree with Paul and, um, you know, the people, there's people that take extreme risks um, because they believe in something. There are people that do it for other reasons, but the ones that are sincere, that really hold those values in their heart, I, I'm grateful for them too, because it's, you know, at the end of the day, that's really what undergirds this whole thing is like what we value within our hearts and in our minds. And, and it's, it was a set of ideas and principles, and but they don't exist in a vacuum. There's always um, assaults on them in one way or another. And so to stand up for that is, is, a, is a really honorable thing. And that's something else that I would be thankful for as well. It's just, you know, um, you know, for me too, I think prayer helps. I know that um, not everybody perhaps watching really has a spiritual life, but I, I would recommend that it's a really net positive thing for you because like you were talking about, Mark, I, you know, for me, it's like when God created man, he placed him in a garden, you know? And for me, getting out to nature is getting closer to God. Um, Damn right. I got my tree, so I, I love it. I've, I've never walked through the woods and felt worse for it. Uh, so maybe that's something to think about too. That's, I mean, that's just kind of our bent probably, you know, but um, yeah, it's just, just kind of think about the mastery of your mind. Maybe think about developing a spiritual life, getting in contact with God if you can. And, yeah. um, and just uh, keeping again, the things in perspective really helps. So thank you for having me on. I've really appreciated it. Yeah. I love talking with you guys and I wish you a happy holiday. Yeah. Blackbeard, as always, thank you very much for being on the podcast. Yeah, you and you have a great, great Thanksgiving weekend, and uh, yes. we'll be talking to you again soon. And by the way, I think not only is that poster, you know, behind you, that that great picture, um, it might be motivational for you, but it's also motivational for everybody else. I mean, it's just such a great image. Matter of fact, I'd actually ask you for one of the next times to try to take a good picture of it and like email it to me so I could maybe use that as the backdrop for one of our future things. Cause it's cool. Okay. You know, I, I like it. It's and, and what a great thing to have in your house. Just it, that would be, look, this is going to be cheesy, but like, you know, I would make an argument that, you know, one of my pieces of gear on your desk. So even when you're sitting there doing your nine to five, you're like, but I can at least grab that thing and I can get out into the woods this weekend, you know? So you're what's behind you would be I'm like, all right, I know it's just a painting, but that's badass, And that's remind me where, of where I want to be this weekend or tomorrow mm -hmm. or something. So I like it. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. I'll see you guys. All right. God all right. bless you, buddy. Thank you. Black. You. See you, Paul. Or sorry. No, Paul, you're coming up next. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Hey guys, we're kind of wrapping it up, but, uh, Paul Beauregard, let's give you one more chance. And then Redbeard, um, let's kind of get your final thoughts and the outro. Yep. And we're in, a, we're, in, we're in hour 10 right now. If we can wrap this up, keep this to like an hour 20, that'll be pretty good. Yep. You know, it went a little bit longer, but I think that was for the better, to tell the truth. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with you guys. I, I could talk all night on this. And <laughs> as much as we want to keep it to an hour, well, I like to. Uh, well, hang on then. Then uh, then we'll do our after AR, me and you on the phone afterwards, because I'm up for a cigar finally after like, you know, 45 yeah, right. days of no tobacco. So. <laughs> You're up for it. I'll join you for a pre-Thanksgiving cigar afterwards. Yeah. So, so the, the obviously the 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 change in my name is because of my background coloring of uh, Violet Beauregard. Um, so it's from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I'm making fun of myself, by the way, uh, which I'm good at. I can still do that, and people can make fun of me, and I don't care. And I think we need to start having a thick spine. I think some of the younger generations aren't getting that thick spine, and I appreciate that. We need to get rid of all this other stuff that is uh, poisoning our children and young adults. And, you know, let, let's look to something happy. And I, I do feel thankful that I believe we're going in that direction. I just hope overall at a high level it's not too late. That's where my fear is. But I think overall – um, that, that our younger generation is that they've seen the light. I just hope it's not too late. You know? uh, I, I like that. And actually I'm just going to segue on that and we'll jump over to Redbeard. Like, you know, again, I've already kind of said my thankful, but it's the same thing that you just said, uh, Paul. So I'm, I'm very thankful for every experience and opportunity that God has put in front of me, you know, through the course of my life. Sometimes I've succeeded and I've been very successful at some things and other times I've failed miserably. But the one thing to kind of what you just said, Paul is, 
But the one thing that I'm really thankful for is that that ability to have been surrounded both mentally and physically and emotionally by individuals such as yourselves, where like, you know, even your greatest fuck up isn't the thing that destroys you. It's like, yep, I just effed up in a major way. And now how am I going to learn from that? How am I going to use that as an opportunity to do, to do better? And again, I, I'm not going to throw my personal religious philosophical thoughts, but you see where I'm going. It's like, that's the, that's what I'm most thankful for. And, and, and to try to turn it into my final, like hopefully positive and hope's not a method. We still got to get off our hands. And you know, that, in other words, I'm saying we're sitting on our hands. We've got to get our hands off from underneath our butts and get out there and start doing things. But I, I, I'm, I'm starting to see that. And I'm hopeful that a lot of other people are starting to see that too. And, you know, and again, that getting out in nature, the canning, the, the, the self-reliance that doesn't make you a crazy person. You're not a prepper for being self-reliant. Like where in the hell in any religion does any religion say, and if you do things for yourself, you're a sinner. You know, like, no, that, that's not how that shit works. Right. So I, I, I agree with you guys. I didn't think about that. I actually wrote like yeah, close to a paragraph on that in my notes. Um, because I, I, yeah, I, I didn't think about that. Hopefully more and more people are waking up to like, Hey, there's all kinds of cool things outside that I should be out there and learning to do. And that makes me a better person. That makes me a better member of my family a better member of my community, better member of my state, my country, however you want to look at it from whatever structure tiers that you want to say, but hopefully people are waking up and I'm, I'm thankful for that. And like you said, though, Paul, I just, you know, Please don't be too late, right? Don't be too late. Any final comments, Paul? Otherwise, I'm going to bring it over to that guy. Boop. Go over to that guy. Yeah. Well, that's me. See, it's it's weird, right? You know, Wait, like, for me, that's him. Yep. Oh, that's him? <laughs> that's him? That's right, that's right. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, any final comments, Paul? No, nah, I'm good. Go ahead, right. Hey, seriously, if you want, we can uh, AR afterwards. I'm going to have a cigar. And uh, I'm just thankful for my surgery, and I'm finally feeling better. So I'm going to have a cigar after this. So, uh, so if you want to sit and join, we can sit because I have a couple things I want to talk to you about anyway. But uh, we we can save that for afterwards. If okay. you got no final comments, Redbeard, yep. the floor is yours, sir. Go ahead, Redbeard. Yeah. So kind of like I uh, explained earlier is I think we are going through like kind of an intellectual renaissance to where people are gravitating more towards like actually expanding their ability to think and you know, being more into, you know, driven into intellectual pursuits, if you will. Um, and it sounds kind of campy or, or, or cliche, but like opening a book, like, I don't think people realize like how much power there is in actually physically opening a book because it's like opening another realm, if you will. And um, growing up, I used to, I, I wanted nothing to do with books, but now as an adult, and I feel like for so many people this is the case but like as an adult it's like when you open a book it's like you're opening something that um kind of kind of forces you to look at something different and in that something different uh you might might not be very appealing to you at times because it challenges like what you think and 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 not just that but like you know learning a new skill set you know is, is also a form of an intellectual pursuit and and it, we also, you know, we, we very much were founded, this country is founded on men who are very intellectually adept. Um, you know, they were, you know, they were physically capable, but at the same time, like they're very intellectually capable. And so we kind of did have that amalgamation of men who were capable of doing, but at the same time were capable of thinking. And it's, a very very important thing to why I emphasize physical fitness, but now I'm I'm trying to make an emphasis on on intellectual pursuits because they both go together. Um, you're you're going to feel a sense of accomplishment, a sense of happiness, a sense of gratitude uh, when you challenge yourself both physically and mentally, and being able to um, you know see what the product of that challenge is and um, it's just those little things, man. Like for people who have kids, take your kid out to your garage. If you have a little workshop or build a little workshop and, and teach them how to build things, teach them how to like a, give them a few tools and, and allow them to learn how to build things or innovate and do stuff like that. Like I, like I said, when I was younger, I used to tear stuff apart 
And uh, that's how I learned. And that's how a lot of kids used to learn. And, and to me, like, that's how you innovate because you get an understanding of that. And uh, my gratitude and, and, and thankfulness for seeing that come to fruition again and seeing that people my age even are raising kids that will do that um, is encouraging because that is the future. And if we want to secure the future for our kids, we have to be encouraging them to, to be free thinkers. We have to be encouraging them to be, you know, people who are, are people of action, not to sit around and wait for the next best savior, the next person who has a catchy little um, campaign slogan. Like those people in the end of the day, those people don't matter. We matter as individuals. We matter because as individuals, we are the ones who are the keepers of our communities. We are the ones who are the keepers of our state and of our country and of our liberty and our rights. So it, you know, in the end of the day, we need to be the leaders that we seek because if we don't, then we're just doomed to, to failure. And so I do have a, a gratitude and a thankfulness to seeing that tide change Yet I am also very cautiously optimistic as well. So on that note, like that's that's kind of where I'm at. Like I, I just see a lot of good, but like I mentioned before, we do need to have an intellectual revolution where it precedes any type of physical, um, any type of physical intervention, you know, and that's not necessarily like fighting, but it's just like, look, like if we're gonna change things, we have to be at a different state of mind. Um and I think that I, I to your guys' point, I do see that happening. Um, it's one of those things to where I think those inches are better done over many years than trying to force that situation. Because as we've seen uh, in generations, the more you try to force your ideals on on children or adolescents, the more they typically resist. So it's one of those things to where you have to be tactful and in in, but in a in a firm way to be able to set that example but i think i think we are course correcting guys and gratitude is huge it's very very important to have every single day and my last my i guess my last point is to anybody that's struggling don't ever give up hope hope is very important it's it, it's you know hope is not a method but it is a very important thing to help with the method that you choose so just when you think that it, you you start to think about quitting like ah you know like this there's no point in it more people quit just before they're about to achieve something big and so all of that work you put in all of those things that you built up to all that time and all that money and or, or whatever it is the resources that you put into something there's so many people that the richest place in the world is the graveyard because so many people die with their dreams so if you think that you're never going to make it, just keep going. That's all I'm going to say. So uh, I think Winston Churchill, I'll have to try to look this up. He's got a great co quote along those lines, you know, like, you know, basically, you know, when, when things look rough, you know, or whatever, you know, that's when you just keep going. Yeah. Like, you know, and I, you know, I can't remember if it was Paul Beauregard or if it was Blackbeard, you know, uh, thankfully thankful yeah. or whatever his thing was, but, uh, but, yeah. it, but it's true. It's like, you know, yeah, it just, th that's when you just keep going or like, you know, and I know Blackbeard did bring up like, Hey, and if this doesn't work, okay, then that, and if this, you know, yeah. like it's the, no matter which way you look at it, dude, there's nothing you can do about it. So, just, yeah. you know, so don't let it weigh you down. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that, but Paul. Final comments. Otherwise, we're going to bring it over to uh, Redbeard, J a.k.a. Jeremy, um, for our outro. Yeah, yeah. The, the honest thing is I think the purple back, the, the whole purple haze went away. <laughs> it looks normal. Oh, no, you're still a little purple. Yep. Am I a little purple? Yeah, yeah you are. No, no, nah, nah, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I'm good. Go ahead, Jeremy. All right. Well, then, hey, Redbeard. Um, All right. Yeah, you're, you're taking us out. My little Perfect. final comment to everybody is, like, you know, no matter what, Jeremy said this before tonight, uh, hope is not a method. It really isn't. You cannot rely upon hope. However, hope is a powerful tool in your toolbox. So yes. don't ever give up hope because even, mm -hmm. even when you think it, there's like my little business, you know, slogan over on center line is keep thinking, keep moving, never quit. That's like basically don't ever give up hope. Even mm -hmm. when you think until it's absolutely over, it's not over. Mm -hmm. Right. So don't ever give up hope. 
And I'm thankful that, that I think there's like a small group of people out there. I'm thankful for all those people who are watching us, yeah. who leave comments. I think, and I'm great, grateful because I think more and more people are starting to wake up to us, even though, so again, we could give up hope. Look, we, I'll, I'll, I'm going to end it with this last week for uh, the, the episode. We had part one, part two last week. And I have a witness, you know, spoon. I uploaded everything because I was going into surgery and I, and I wanted to get everything mm -hmm. set up. So I didn't have to, I, you know, so I could fire and forget, just get it set up. And then I, cause you know, I'm literally today's kind of like my, my first day of coming back to life, so to speak, you know, kind of, you know, yeah. as far as, you know, feeling and not, you know, and I slept half the day still today too, but there it was social media, big social media. Cause they don't like what we're talking about. They don't like this. Not only did, so I had uploaded part two, wasn't there, wasn't there anywhere at all. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, so you, and, and it isn't just us. I mean, you, you guys, if you're watching this, you know, what I'm talking about, there's a million people out there. Everybody, everybody's being shadow banned. You can't like have comments. Hell last year, uh, well, earlier correction earlier this year, I did those charity auctions that you, you we were just getting throttled. Like they don't even want you to do yeah. good things, but don't give up hope. That just makes yeah. you got to like double down and say, I'm just going to keep doing it. And I'm just going to keep trying to get this message out there. I give thanks that again, even just for me in this conversation tonight between, you know, with us, the, the, you know, the guests that we had, the four horsemen and for you, the people who are watching and listening, that still gives me hope and it refreshes and it, and it reinforces don't give up. Right. There's, because yeah. it ain't over until it's over, baby. And it That's ain't right. over yet. So yeah. Red beard. Well, well Paul, yeah. anything on that? You want to say it? Did I say anything stupid? Anything to add? Otherwise, we're doing the outro. No, no, I, I agree with the last two things both of you said, or everything. The last thing both of you said. All right, Blackbeard or correction. God, you, I can't. I got to stop calling both of you by your beard nickname. Yeah. I'm either going to call you yeah. Jeremy and him Blackbeard or him Stephen and you Redbeard. Honestly, you kind of were the first with the beard. So I'm going to just keep with you, Redbeard, and yeah. I'm going to start calling him Steven a little bit more or come up with yeah. another nickname yeah. for him or something. Yeah. But, all right, sir. Well, why don't you? Hey, and by the way, I just want to give you a quick thanks before you take yeah. it out and say thanks to everybody watching or listening. Thank you, because I know yeah. you got family there right now and you're taking time yeah. out of your your grind to, to be here with us. So thank you very much for putting in the, the effort. Yeah. I appreciate it, sir. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, you know, as always, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for bringing me back, Mark. <laughs> I didn't think I, I didn't think I, I hang on hand. Hang on. Do I have a choice? I didn't think I had a choice in the matter. If, hey, if I no, I just, I just, that? I had to say something kind of funny to make it seem like, you know, like, oh, I don't know. I, he could have, he could have outsourced to somebody else, you know, yeah. Paul, oh, does have a better, Paul does have a better beard. So I, I don't know. So, hey, now that's a legitimate point. That beard is looking pretty damn good. It is. Yeah. So, I mean. Oh, you're Mark, muted. I, oh, nice you camera angle. His beard is one color, at least. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, not as sexy as having a multicolored beard. I mean, you know. No, there's down. something to be said about, about different beard tones. So, yeah. All right. We're enough. We're kind of like yep. just bullshit yep. now. So, All right, yeah, guys. Let's bring it up. Take us out, uh, yeah. Red Beard. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do what you got to do, sir. Yep. No, and I, I just wanted to quick to your point there, Mark, uh, before I take us out. Um, sure. You know, like even if even if you do fail, like hope doesn't go away. Like all your hope is going to do is be like, I just have to pivot to where I need to go next. Like that's 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 all hope is. Right. So like just make that pivot, man, because like that hope will pay off someday. And uh, so if you do fail, don't ever be afraid of failure. Just recognize it, learn from it and move forward. So on that note. Hey, I know this is Mark's favorite time. Uh, I love look, it. I love it. Everybody, look, the flame of liberty shall not and will not ever be extinguished so long as there are good people willing to support and defend it. And like Mark always says, you are the resistance, right? And, and the resistance comes in many different factors. But the one thing that we have to remember, the underlying theme that, that really does support this resistance is we have to be grateful. We have to be hopeful. We have to be... Uh, inflamed with a sense of purpose and and have that purpose drive us forward whether it's like dave where he's you know killing it with his kids and all the stuff that he's doing or it's mark delivering the message that he has or paul that even brings his insight and blackbeard and so many other people like it it really does take people from all walks of life to make this happen so 
Uh, on that note, look, we're very grateful for every single person here uh, that has joined us tonight and in all the other podcast episodes. We are extremely grateful for each and every person that tunes in. And uh, I, from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure I can speak for both Paul and Mark and everybody that was here, uh, God bless everybody. We certainly and sincerely hope that you all have a safe and great Thanksgiving, and we look to see you guys on the next one. So on that note, Let's take it out. Have a very happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Take care, y'all.